Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Charlie. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing y'all how to make my delicious seasoned oven baked chicken breast. And of course, we take the pan juices and we make a delicious and flavorful chicken gravy. It's all natural, they don't have any bouillon cubes or anything in it. And along with that, I'm going to also show you how to make some homemade mashed potatoes with lots of butter and my homemade broccoli and cheese mush. Now the reason why I call it mush is because the broccoli is just basically pulverized and cheese. This recipe calls for about six to eight servings. It's a little bit on the healthier side. It's really flavorful and it's absolutely delicious. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, here's all you need to make your oven roasted chicken breast with mashed potatoes and broccoli and cheese. Let's get started with our ingredients. You'll need two and a half pounds of chicken breast, four pounds of russet potatoes. Here I have three heads of broccoli. This is about two and a half pounds of that. You will also need some olive oil, salted butter, whole milk, heavy whipping cream, sour cream, extra sharp cheddar cheese, and I have two eight ounce packs of that. Sorry y'all, I meant to say sharp cheddar cheese, but if you wanna use extra sharp cheddar cheese, that's fine. And for your seasonings, you will need some salt, black pepper, white pepper, Tony Sacheray's Creole seasoning. Now, if you don't have this, you can use the Zatarain's Creole seasoning or the Slappin' Mama Cajun seasoning. You will also need some Chef Paul Padone's Poultry Magic and Vegetable Magic, granulated onion, granulated garlic, some mesquite seasoning, some mesquite liquid smoke, some dried thyme, and some all-purpose flour. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you're also going to need one small lime. And for your tools, you'll need a fruit or potato peeler, a potato masher, a grater or shredder, and to bake your chicken breast, you will need an 11 by 17 inch baking pan. And there we have it. All right, let's get straight to it. So I transferred my chicken breast into this strainer and I'm going to rinse the chicken breast off with cold water. Now I like to do this step to rinse off any blood or particles that might be on the chicken breast. Okay, here's our chicken breast. And as you can see, this is uh, pretty thick. You can just take a knife. I'm doing this with my left hand here, which I'm not good at. And I'm going to cut this in half. Yeah, I did it. And there we go. We have our two halves of our chicken breast. And once done, you should have about one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of chicken breast all together. All right, we've transferred our chicken breast into this large bowl. So let's add some seasoning. I'm going to sprinkle a half a teaspoon of salt, one eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, one eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper, one teaspoon of Tony Sacheray's Creole seasoning, one teaspoon of Chef Paul Perdome's Portrait Magic, one teaspoon of granulated onion, one teaspoon of granulated garlic, one teaspoon of the mesquite seasoning. A half a teaspoon of dry thyme and two to three teaspoons of the mesquite liquid smoke. Oh, and I also want to add about two to three teaspoons of olive oil. All right, now here I have a lime here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take one of the halves of the limes and I'm just going to squeeze that onto the chicken breast as well. Okay, I'm going to take my hands and I'm just going to put all the seasonings and the olive oil onto the chicken breast pieces. Make sure you rub the seasonings onto the chicken breast really well. Alright, that looks good. Now I'm going to cover this. Place this into your refrigerator for about two to four hours or overnight. Okay, here we have a russet potato and I'm going to just take my uh, potato peel and I'm just going to peel the potato. And there we go. Okay, next we're going to cut the russet potatoes. And I'm just going to cut them into quarter pieces, as you see here. All right, here I have a large pot. I'm going to just add the cute potatoes right on in there. And now I'm just uh, running some water into this pot. And what I'm doing here is I'm just going to 
clean the potatoes off with the cold water. Make sure your hands clean because I know mine is. And from there I'm just going to pour the potato cubes right on in there. And we're just going to let this sit in here until we're ready to make our mashed potatoes. Alright, here we have a head of broccoli. And I'm going to just start by removing the stems off like that. And I think I'll be able to cut through it from here. I'll just take a knife. And I'm going to just trim the stem off because I really don't want the stem. I just want to use the broccoli florets. And that's basically it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just separate it like that. And there we go. And once you finish from preparing your broccoli, you're just going to take it and you're going to place it into this large pot. Or you could place it into a large bowl as well. Now this does look like a lot of broccoli, but once it, uh, once you finish from parboiling it and cooking it down, it won't be really much at all. Alright, so now I'm um, running some cold water into this large pot. It could be a bowl on that. I'm going to just carefully kind of like just rinse them off a little bit. I'm just going to add the broccoli florets right on in there. Just pour it all right on in there. Let some of the water drain. And afterwards, I'm just going to give this a quick shake. And we're just going to let that sit until it's ready to be cooked. All right, here we have our uh, shredder, our cheese shredder. Next, I'm going to shred two 8-ounce packages of sharp cheddar cheese. I just cut the 8 ounce blocks in half and I'm just shredding each half. And there we go. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 375 degrees. Alright, here we have an 11 by 17 inch baking pan. And I'm just going to add about 1 to 2 teaspoons of olive oil. It doesn't really have to be a certain amount. Just add a little bit in there. I'm going to just take my hand and I'm just going to spread that around the baking pan. Next, you're going to add your chicken breast right on in there. And that's simple. In the oven it goes. Place this into a preheated 375 degree oven on the middle rack. And as you can see, I'm placing it on the bottom rack, but don't pay no mind to that. Place it onto the middle rack, because I normally bake my chicken breast on the middle rack anyways. And also, baking times vary depending on the size and thickness of the chicken breast. So it can take more or less time. Bake this for 18 to 20 minutes. Alright, it's been about 18 to 20 minutes now for our chicken breast. Now let's go ahead and remove this out of the oven. Okay, now we're going to take the uh, cooked chicken breasts and we're going to place them onto this serving dish over here. Okay, I've cut into one of the pieces of uh, chicken breast. As you can see, it's nice and juicy. Here's the pan juices over here, so we're going to deglaze this bacon pan. And I've covered the chicken breast with uh, the plate with the chicken breast in it with aluminum foil to keep that warm. And to that, I'm going to add one and one half cups of hot water. And I'm going to let this sit for about two minutes. I'm just going to take my spatula and I'm just going to carefully glide it onto the bottom of the pan. And what's going to happen is, is that the pan juices are going to combine with the water. So it's going to make its own flavorful stock. So the water won't make it taste bland or anything like that. And there we go. Oh, and I also want to let y'all know that when you taste this, if you pick up a spoon and have a little taste of it, it should be nice and concentrated. It should have a very nice chicken flavor. Okay, and from there, I'm going to carefully pour the chicken stock mixture. I'm just going to pour that into this measuring cup. And once done, you should have about one and two third cups of the homemade chicken stock or the homemade pan juices in this measuring cup. So we're going to take this and make a gravy with it. Preheat your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started making our chicken sauce. So in this large saucepan, 
I'm going to add two tablespoons of salted butter. I cubed it, of course. I'm just going to drop that on in there. And I'm going to just spread that around and let that melt. Okay, and next I'm going to add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm going to take my spatula and I'm just going to stir this continuously. Stir this continuously for three minutes or until the mixture reaches a peanut butter color. All right, it's been about three minutes now and our mixture is in light brown color, like a peanut butter color. And to that, we're going to add one and two third cups of our pan juices. Just pour that right on in there. I'm going to give this a quick stir. All right, as for seasoning, we don't really add, we don't really need to add too much. Just need to add just a little bit because once it's cooked down, it's going to be really concentrated. So I'm going to just sprinkle about one fourth teaspoon of Chef Paul Perdome's Poetry Magic. And just stir all the ingredients together. Let this simmer for five minutes, stirring occasionally. All right, it's been about five minutes now for our chicken sauce. And it is done. Look at that. Oh, it looks beautiful. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my fire off. Let this cool completely. Preheat your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started with preparing our potato cubes. So in this large pot, I've added about two and a half quarts of water and it's up to a simmer. And to that, I'm just going to add about a teaspoon and a half of salt. And from there, I'm just going to give it a quick stir. And from there, I'm going to add my potato cubes. I'm going to give this a quick stir. I'm going to cover this. Let this simmer for 10 to 12 minutes. All right, it's been about 10 to 12 minutes now. And our potato cubes should be nice and tender. And the only way to tell is if you take a fork. And as you can see, they're already breaking apart. It is ready. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my fire off. Next, I'm going to add the potato cubes into this mesh strainer. Be very careful because it is very hot. And from there, I'm going to let this cool for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the potato cubes are warm. All right, I've placed my uh, potato cubes into this large bowl. I have, I have a potato masher and I'm just going to mash the potato cubes. And there we go. Preheat your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started of making our mashed potatoes. So in this large pot, I'm going to add six tablespoons of salted butter. As you can see, I cubed it. I'm going to add that in there. I'm just going to spread that around. And I'm going to let that melt. Okay, next I'm going to add two third cup of whole milk. Three tablespoons of sour cream. Now let's add some seasoning. I'm going to sprinkle about one teaspoon of salt. One eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper. A half a teaspoon of Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning. A half a teaspoon of Chef Paul Perdome's Vegetable Magic. A half a teaspoon of granulated onion. And a half a teaspoon of granulated garlic. I'm going to take my whisk and stir all the ingredients together. Let this get hot for about three minutes, stirring occasionally. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my fire off. Add your mashed potato cubes. Stir all your ingredients together. Make sure you stir this really well. And there we have it. Our mashed potatoes is done. Preheat your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started with pot boiling our broccoli for our broccoli and cheese. So in this uh, large pot, I have about two quarts of simmering water. And to that, I'm going to add one and one half teaspoons of salt. Give that a quick stir. Add the broccoli florets. Stir all your ingredients together. I'm going to cover this. 
Let this simmer for four minutes, stirring occasionally. All right, it's been about four minutes now. And our broccoli florets should be nice and tender. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn my fire off. Add your broccoli florets into this mesh strainer. Be very careful because it's hot. Let this cool off for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the broccoli is warm. Preheat your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started with making our cheese sauce for our broccoli and cheese. So in this large saucepan, here I have about three tablespoons of salted butter. I'm just gonna add that in there. I'm going to spread that around. And I'm gonna let that melt. Okay, next I'm gonna add a half a cup of whole milk, a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Now for seasoning, we're just gonna add about one fourth to a half a teaspoon of salt, one eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a teaspoon of Chef Paul Poudom's vegetable magic. I'm going to give this a quick stir. Let this get hot for about one to two minutes. Then next you're going to turn your fire down from medium to medium low heat. Add your shredded sharp cheddar cheese. Stir this continuously for about two to three minutes or until the cheese melts into the liquid. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my fire off. We're going to add our broccoli. Just going to give it a quick stir. Just stir it until combined. Your fire on your stove should be off. And there we have it. Our broccoli and cheese is ready. And there we go. All done. Here is the final presentation. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Seasoned oven baked chicken breast with chicken gravy, mashed potatoes, and broccoli and cheese made by New Orleans Native. If you like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified of my videos. I have an official website for all of my recipes, including this one. Go to www.charliecookandrews.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter under the name Charlie the Cook Andrews. Stay tuned as Charlie's Taste Test is coming up next. Can't wait. Ah, now it's time to go ahead and take a bite. I don't know where to start. I'm going to start somewhere. So I'm going to start off with the chicken, the mashed potatoes, and then the broccoli and cheese. Mm. Now for the mashed potatoes. Mmm. Ooh, I could just imagine how these mashed potatoes taste with that, with that chicken with them. Mm. Oh, that's good. And now for the broccoli and cheese. Let's see. Mmm. 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 This is really, really good. The chicken breasts are nice, tender, and juicy, and that chicken gravy, mm. and then when it cooked down, it's nice and concentrated. Oh man, that is, the flavor is outstanding. And then the mashed potatoes is nice, creamy, buttery. It's really good. And the broccoli and cheese mush is really, really good. I mean, it has the, just the right amount of cheese. It's not overly saturated like where the cheese taste is too sharp. It's just the right amount. So, because normally sometimes with the sharp, sharp cheese, it just makes it taste bitter. So, I like it with a little bit of a milder cheese than the extra sharp version. But overall, this is an excellent, wonderful meal for you to try. Mostly, I think about this. It actually could be classified as a comfort food. Anyways, give this recipe a try. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a good one. Peace.